All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the channel. My name is Jake. Today, I'm going to be going in depth about uh, striper fishing. I've been getting a lot of people on Instagram messaging me about this stuff and asking a bunch of questions. So uh, today, I'm going to just do my best to kind of explain everything that I know about striper fishing. And this is mostly going to be for shore anglers. Uh, people surf casting and stuff like that and mostly people who are using artificial lures so stay tuned till the end this is probably going to be a pretty long video i'm going to go pretty in depth about everything all right i'm going to start by talking a little bit about stripers kind of explaining how they behave and stuff like that so these fish are migratory fish so um they move up and down the coast um you know in search of um the right water temperatures and stuff. So stripers typically like um, water temps between 50 and 70 degrees. So uh, depending on where you live, they are going to uh, migrate down south in the winter and they're gonna move more up north in the summertime. So there's gonna be short windows where you can target these fish. Uh, typically it's gonna be in the springtime and in the fall time. So striped bass, um, as their name implies, they are bass, so they really like uh, structure, things like bridges and rock piles and things like that, underwater humps. And another thing that they really like is current, so they're gonna hang out in places where they can hide from the current and just let the bait fish come to them. The current's gonna bring the bait fish to them, and then they're going to ambush and they're gonna come out from their cover and feed. So in the springtime these fish are typically going to move into salt ponds and like brackish rivers to uh, spawn and feed in there. And these fish uh, do like to school up as well so they're going to be in big schools following schools of small bait fish or whatever bait fish they can uh, really find. They're going to follow those schools and follow them wherever they're going. So last but not least, um, these fish really like to feed at night. Um, most of my big fish and um, like large quantities of fish that I caught in one night were all at nighttime and typically they like to feed like late at night. I mean, they'll feed whenever, wherever there's food, but nighttime is like one of the best times to really target these fish. So next I'm going to be talking about um, baits and stuff like that and I do apologize if it sounds like I, I'm reading off a script. Uh, I did write down a bunch of notes because there is a lot of things with stripers that uh, are pretty important so I wanted to make sure that this video is like really informational and uh, easy for you guys to watch and learn from. So if you guys are enjoying this and you think it's helpful definitely subscribe and leave a comment down below. And um, if you have any questions throughout the video, uh, feel free to follow me on Instagram and shoot me a DM because I'm always active on there. All right, so for baits, I'm just gonna start off with my favorite baits and uh, what I like to use a lot. So um, my favorite bait is gonna have to be a pencil popper. So this is like a walking, walk the dog style bait. Uh, you work it really erratically. Um, on the surface and the fish will come up and just destroy it. Um, this thing has caught me a lot of fish. I, I constantly use these. Not this one specifically, this one's brand new, but um, <clears throat> I have a couple different kinds of pencil poppers here, different colors and stuff like that. So my second favorite bait is going to have to be a swim shad. So this is a pretty big one. Um, this was just what I had in my waters at the time when there were big fish around, so this is what I was throwing. Um, these are really good for just throwing them anywhere, like if you don't know what kind of bait fish are in your waters, just throwing something like this in like a simple pattern, um, or black and white or whatever, uh, is gonna give you a really good chance of catching a uh, striper. So some other poppers are some tsunami talking popper, so it's kind of like a walk the dog also. And there is things like, uh, and uh, th this is just a chug bug, so this is just basic popper. And you just pop it, pop it, and fish really like this. I love them, and top water blow ups are freaking awesome. 
So another one of my favorite baits to throw is going to be a jerk bait style, uh, like SP Minnow right here or uh, Yozuri or anything like that. These are really good uh, floating or suspending or whatever. And then there's jointed ones that you can use. So another really important bait uh, when striper fishing is going to be white bucktails. Uh, you can use other colors, but typically just white works. It, it, they just work. These are like some of the most versatile baits that you can use. They're small half ounce, eighth ounce, there's three quarters, one ounce, two ounce, three ounce, uh, there's all in between sizes. So these are really, really good if you're just looking for a bite and you can't get anything. Bucktail is always what I switch to. Um, when you get more advanced into striper fishing and you learn a lot more, you're gonna start seeing plugs like this. Uh, this is a needlefish and this is a darter. Um, these are a lot more situational um, types of lures, so this is going to be something that you're going to be learning about a little bit later on. I'm not really going to go into these now because it's a whole other ball game when you get into this kind of big lures like this. So obviously there's a lot to be said about live and dead baits. Uh, I'm not really going to go into that in this video because I personally don't really know much about it. Um, I have used uh, rigged eels before and uh, they are really good eels are just like striper candy so that is something if uh, you're going for big fish and stuff and you know there's fish around using an eel is a really good option and lastly regarding the colors of baits and stuff like that um, the most important thing that you can do is figure out what kind of bait is in your waters at the time that you want to go fishing so ask around go to bait shops and ask people what they're seeing in the waters and uh, the dominant bait fish that is in your water, you're gonna wanna match that hatch because that's what a lot of fish are gonna be feeding on. And as far as colors go, I usually stick to black or white in uh, any bait, just black or white is gonna be like a nighttime, daytime kind of thing. Oh, and one more thing too is uh, focus on the size of the bait. You wanna really match the hatch and um, throw a bait that is the perfect size of the bait that is in your waters, especially when you're using artificial, uh, it's going to be your best bet to really uh, get into some fish. Alright, so for this last part, I'm going to be talking about gear and rod setups and stuff like that. So I only have two rod setups for uh, my striper fishing that I do, and uh, my first one is going to be a... Oh, a lot of dust on these. <laughs> wow, that's funny. Um, so this is a 10 foot uh, surf caster and this is a pen setup. So this is a pretty inexpensive compared to uh, other setups that you can get. Pen is a really good um, company to go with. So this is an 8,000 size reel. This is a really big beefy reel. You do not really need this but it is pretty good if you're really uh, wanting to target big fish and you're going to be fishing in a lot of heavy structure and stuff like that. So the line that I use is going to be braid. I always use braid. It's just really good for casting and uh, getting that bait out there. So this is 65 pound braid. Depending on where you're fishing, you're going to want to up your line to 80 pound or if you're only fishing for schoolies, then you can use like 30 pound, what I have on my other rod. Okay, so a really important part of striper fishing when you're first starting off is going to be fluorocarbon leaders. Um, this is a 50 pound fluorocarbon leader. I don't really fish too heavy of structure, so um, that it's, it's good for me. But obviously if you're in a lot of rocks and there's big fish and you really want to get those big fish, uh, you're going to want to up that to some heavier uh, fluorocarbon. And uh, another really important thing, well for me at least, with like changing lures, is going to be these tactical angler clips. Um, you can find these online. They're just really, really useful because tying leaders and stuff like that is really annoying. And you're going to be changing baits a lot uh, when you're striper fishing. So it's just a really easy, simple clip. You just put it in and it just clips right on. And these range from 25 to 175 pound test clips. So uh, depending on where you're at, where you're fishing, how heavy, 
your cover is, how big the fish are, you're gonna want um, bigger clips and stuff like that. So that is super key for me. It's just it's just gonna make your life a lot easier when you're starting out. So this is my other setup. Uh, this is a lot lighter. Uh, like I said, it's only 30 pound braid and 30 pound fluorocarbon. Again, with the tactical angler clip. Um, this is just for like, if I'm just fishing for schoolies and I know there's not really a lot of big fish around or if I'm fishing in the daytime and uh, I know that those big fish aren't really gonna be active, I just switch over to the light rod. Uh, it's a lot easier to cast and uh, less tiring on your arms and stuff like that. So I recommend getting like a, a decent, you know, it's not, this thing isn't really, this is really, really light. Um, <laughs> probably a little too light to be striper fishing, but I use it anyways because I'm not rich. So I couldn't really get anything that was like really, really high quality. So uh, I recommend getting something light that you can uh, mess around with the schoolies with. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is a pen battle two. This was a complete setup. So if you guys want to get yourself something fairly inexpensive and high quality and um, good to just start right off with, uh, this is going to be a good option for you. All right, so rod and reel and line is uh, out of the way now. and. I'm just gonna basically go over some other important gear that you might want to invest in if you really wanna get into this stuff and uh, some safety tips and stuff like that because uh, some places that you might be fishing can be really dangerous. So you're gonna wanna um, be really safe and have the proper gear when you go out there. So I'm just gonna start off with uh, nighttime fishing. Um, you're gonna want a headlamp so you can see what you're doing. <laughs> really important uh, definitely invest in a good one um, because you really don't want to have no light when you're out there in the dark fishing uh, out on sketchy rocks and heavy current and stuff so another super important piece of equipment in my eyes and the way that I fish is going to be um, waders and corkers so waders obviously are gonna help you get in the water and kind of get to spots that other anglers aren't really going to be able to get to because they don't have waders and uh, in the fall and the spring the water is going to be pretty cold so you want to dress warm and have a nice pair of waders that are going to keep you dry. Um, so corkers are another important thing. Basically they're a pair of boots that um, go over your waders and corkers make waders that are meant for the boots. So they're pretty expensive, but if you're really planning on getting out there in heavy current and wet rocks and in the waves and stuff, uh, you're really gonna want a pair of corkers. So basically they're like boots that have like metal studs or they have a, the, a felt material that are gonna grip wet rocks so that you don't slip and fall. Um, safety first, you don't wanna be falling uh, in cold water, hitting your head on a rock or something like that. Uh, I can't stress it enough. If you're really going to get out there and uh, be serious about getting on some big fish, you're going to be in some sketchy areas and you do not want to fall and get hurt. So corkers are going to help you a lot. So one other thing that I think is uh, really important is going to be a surf bag. I don't actually have one, uh, unfortunately. Um, but surf bag is basically like a small bag and it has like these PVC like tube in it that you can put a bunch of plugs in and you know bucktails and stuff like that and leaders and hooks and um, that's just going to make it way easier. It's just going to sit on your side instead of having a backpack because when you go in the water you know if you're surf casting on a beach or something um, you're going to be in the water getting hit by waves and uh, it's just going to make it really easy to change out your plug or your lure and just open up the bag and take one out and take the other lure off the clip, put it in and just switch them out. It's going to make it really easy uh, if you are going to get into like surf casting and stuff like that. Also with the surf bag, there's a surf belt that you can get which will hold your pliers and other things that you're going to be using like your fish grips and stuff like that to uh, hold the fish. and you know, unhook the fish and stuff like that. All right, that's about it. Um, that's all I can really think of. Uh, there is a lot more that I probably missed, but uh, that's all right. This is just kind of a beginner's video. Um, I just tried to 
you know, write down everything that I could really think of that I know about stripers and, uh, you know, the everything that I've learned about striper fishing over the years. So I hope uh, you guys found this useful, and if you did, definitely subscribe so that you guys can check out some uh, striper fishing videos coming in the future. Uh, hopefully I'll be doing that soon. The water is starting to warm up a little bit. So uh, yeah, leave a like, uh, drop a comment, and I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.